Hello everyone and welcome to this week's uh, Sports Podcast. It's Friday the 12th of March 2021. Plenty to get through this week. Um, so the breaking news at this moment as I'm doing this is the fact that Chris Wilder's left Sheffield United which has come as a bit of a surprise to me. I know they've not had a very good season but uh, it were obvious that they were going to go down with the players that they've got and I'm a little bit surprised about what, what's transpired today. Obviously we don't know the full circumstances yet but I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, whether he's chosen to walk away, I'm not sure. Um, I've got to say, uh, on the face of it, the players that they've got just simply aren't good enough. Last year, he got the best out of what he'd got, but this season, the players just don't seem to be good enough. A lot of them seem to be of like championship standard more than anything else. Players like McBurney, Burke, even Rian Bruce has been very poor. I can see why Liverpool got rid of him. I don't think I think they knew he probably ain't going to make it, but you never know. They've got other players. They've got a couple of good players. I think John Fleck's a good player. I think the goalkeeper Ramsdale's a good goalkeeper. And they might get picked up into some of our Premier League teams. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a surprise this morning. So that's this morning's breaking news. Um, in the next hour or so, or just over an hour I think it is, uh, the first T20 international match between India and England starts. Uh, it'll be interesting in this series to see how England gets on. England and India are the two best teams in the world at T20 cricket. England obviously... Uh, looking to win the World Cup in T20 later this year. Um, the last time we lost a series at T20 was in India in 2018, so this is going to be a real challenge for them. Um, looking at um, what's happened during the week, well, we've had the European Games again in the football, and um, a good result for Liverpool through to uh, quarter-finals of the Champions League, and um, also in the Europa League, first positive first-leg results last night for both Tottenham and Arsenal. A draw for Manchester United over to Milan, which will make it tough for them, especially if either Rashford or Martial are unable to play in the second leg. Um, I know Solskjaer's hopeful that Rashford will be fit for next Thursday. Uh, he'll certainly be a bigger miss, in my opinion, than Martial will be. Um, so I'll keep an eye on that one as well, because it's going to be an interesting game next Thursday in Milan. And the uh, Rangers have got a draw away to Slavia Prague um, after trailing early on. I think they'll be fairly pleased with that, having been away in the first leg and having a way of goals. So... You'd like to think all four teams will get through, but certainly Tottenham and Arsenal are in strong positions after the first legs. Um, in the weekend coming ahead, Tottenham actually play Arsenal in the North London derby on Sunday, and that's probably the main game this weekend. That's the one that's the Sky game on um, Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. So that's going to be worth watching, as I thought. Um, of a big game as well, there's an important game in both ends of the table. Fulham play Manchester City tomorrow night um, on BT Sport. And tonight it's Newcastle against Aston Villa. Villa will be out without Grealish again tonight, Jack Grealish, but good news is that El Ghazi and Cash are both back in the squad, I believe, so that's a positive for them. Newcastle need the points desperately to get away from that relegation fight now, but Fulham, who are picking up, and Brighton are involved with them as well, so, and don't count Burnley out of it yet, I don't think they're quite out of the woods yet, so keep an eye on how Burnley get on in the next few games, because it's going to be tough for them as well. Um, at the top, Manchester City beat Southampton 5-2 in the only Premier League midweek game. Um, they were a bit shaky at the back, but they just seemed to go with the theory or um, the idea that if you score, we'll score. Another one more than you, a bit like Real Madrid used to do in the days of the Galacticos, but they won comfortably in the end up. So, um, you know, an easy win for them. 14 points clear. I know Man United have got a game in hand, but it's going to be difficult to close that gap, and I think it's more or less gone. Uh, Liverpool struggling again after another defeat last weekend against Fulham, which was a big surprise, I'm sure, for a lot of people. Although, you might say, say it's not such a surprise the way Liverpool's form's been going. Although, well, they picked it up again in midweek against um, Red Bull Leipzig to get through to the next round of the Champions League, as I've already mentioned. So, it's not all bad for Liverpool at the moment. Things are picking up in that respect. Um, so, yeah, we've got those um, games to look forward to this weekend, um, from Friday through to Monday. And then we've also got um, the Rugby Six Nations is back this weekend. Um, England's chances of winning that have gone basically haven't they so they just have to try and do the best they can now with the games to come I know they've got still to play France yet at the end um, but France and Wales are going to be fighting over the title I think by the looks of it um, Super League's back in a couple of weeks but Rugby League fans will be pleased to see the fixtures I think are uh, popping up on Sky regular now I think it's two weeks today so um, if you've got Sky and you like Rugby League Super League that's uh, going to be back in on TV shortly the darts, I think, starts probably next week or the week after the Premier League. Um, the fixtures have been announced for their first round of games, and I see that Gerwin Price has been drawn against his best mate, Gary Anderson. So that should be interesting. I think Michael Van Gerwen is playing Dimitri Vandenberg, so that's a really interesting one as well. Um, 
I'd just like to say well done to James Wade on winning the uh, champion UK Open Championship last weekend. He did well there. He's uh, um, it's the first time he's won anything major for quite some time. He's always been a great player. He's won everything apart from the World Championship. And I have to say, I thought his star was on the wane a little bit, but uh, it's nice to see him come back and do well. So well done to James Wade. Um, the big event um, coming up in the next week or so is the Cheltenham Festival for horse racing fans. That's the that's like their World Cup effectively. Oh, it's Christmas. Cheltenham people call it in the in the betting world. So. Um, just some of the horses to look out for in the uh, meeting at Cheltenham and some of the ones I'd like to point out I'm not saying go and back these, I never give tips out but um, in the, on Tuesday Supreme Novices Hurdle appreciate it, it's certainly one to, to look out for um, in the Novice Chase, the Arkham Novice Chase keep it out for Shishkin um, should win that race I would expect um, also on Tuesday we've got the uh, Champion Hurdle which is the main race of the day Honeysuckle and Goshen are the two, if they're both declared to run it, they're two to watch out for there. And in the uh, Mayor's Hurdle, we've got Conscientista and Roxana to keep an eye on. They're the two main ones I'd look for. Uh, moving on to Wednesday, we've got the RSA Chase, and the odds-on favourite for that race is Monkfish. So, um, you know, it's uh, I think it's like two to three on, or four to six on, should I say, um, if you understand betting terms. That's uh, the favourite for that race. And they've got in the champion chase, everybody knows of Altio, whether it's declared to run, I'm not sure, but Chacun Poussoir is another horse to keep out an eye out on that race. And they've got Easy's Land in the cross-country chase also on Wednesday. And um, I think that's it for Wednesday. On to Thursday. And on Thursday, we've got uh, Envoi Allen in the Marsh Novices chase, which I think is the first race of the day on Thursday. Now, obviously, controversy surrounding that horse because it was owned and it's trained by Gordon Elliott, who people who have been following the news stories recently will realise that Elliott has been banned for 12 months. Uh, the last six of that has been suspended because of that photo I had taken, sat on the dead horse. Uh, any other news on that along those lines? The, I think it was amateur jockey Rob James, or Rob Jones, Rob James, I think, has also received a 12-month ban for a similar picture that was taken that's been has emerged in the last couple of weeks. So rather distasteful um, things but it shouldn't take away from the fact that Envoy Allen is a favourite for that race and it's a great horse um, in the um, Ryanair Chase perennial favourite Min is likely to be running that race so keep an eye out for Min in that race and you've got Paisley Park and Time Hill they've had some great battles over the last couple of seasons on the on the jumps uh, in the Stayers Hurdle on Thursday as well and then we move on to the final day Gold Cup Day Friday and um We've got uh, to look at the main race. I think people are looking at album photo to try and uh, win it again. Um, that's the main race on Friday. And you've also got um, the Fox Hunters, Fox Hunters Chase. You've got Bill Away in the Fox Hunters Chase. And you've got Ellie May and Cole Reavy in the Mayor's Chase as well. Um, so they're the main things I want to talk about. And oh, one I've just missed, actually, realise I've missed, is the Triumph Hurdle, which is also on the Friday. Keep an eye on Tritonic. It's been really good form. That's a good horse to look at. So that's sort of like my preview of um, what's going to happen. At, what I think will happen at Cheltenham, or what, you know, the horses to watch out for. Like I say, I'm not recommending you bet any of them, but just for people that are interested in horse racing, they'll know that some of those horses that I've mentioned are going to be in with a good shout. And if you've got any comments or anything you'd like to tip up, put them in the comments. I'm not going to, you know, suggest you follow any people's tips, but you know, it might give you an idea if you're interested in doing that kind of thing. So. Just to, to point that out to you. So um, we're just going to move back now to the football. And we're going to talk a little bit about FC Halifax Town. They had a fantastic result on Tuesday night at away to Notts County. They beat them 2-1. Um, and Sam Johnson saved a penalty at 1-0 to us. So it was a vital uh, intervention in the game by Sam. Whether it was a penalty or not is uh, disputable or debatable. Because it didn't look like a penalty to me. I think their player went down a bit easily. But in this day and age... Um, penalties seem to be given for anything. Having said that, on the flip side, the Manchester City Southampton game saw a ridiculous decision where VAR didn't didn't intervene in an incident involving Phil Foden, where Alex McCarthy quite clearly nearly broke his ankle, but he didn't get the penalty because he stayed on his feet. For being honest, he got penalised. What's your view on diving and being honest and staying up? What do you think about penalties? We won't even go into handball. And you can want to talk about VAR. Put anything you like about VAR in the comments as well, because I'm sure that will open a, a raging debate as well. So. Yeah, so back to FC Halifax Town, and that's a great result. And we've got two home games coming up now. We've got Solihull Moors tomorrow, who have just reappointed Mark Yates as their manager um, after sacking the previous manager during the week. 
and then we've got Aldershot on Tuesday. Um, hopefully Aldershot are now back uh, up and playing again after having another outbreak of coronavirus. Um, so two vital home games. We're up to ninth after the result at Notts County on, and we've got a really good chance now of making a, a force our way into the top seven. Um, and the team's something coming together nicely now. I think after the stuttering start to the season, they've got themselves going. Hopefully, um, Billy Chadwick can have more of an influence while he's here. And by the time he leaves, if he does leave after the initial one month loan period, Luke Summerfield should be in a position where he'll be near to returning anyway. Jake Hyde can, if Jake Hyde can avoid any further injury, he's starting to knock the goals in now as well. And um, we've got a solid back four and a good goalkeeper. So I'm fairly confident we can make the playoffs now. Actually, we're doing really, really well. I think so. You know, let's hope we can make it. It'd be nice to to get back in the football league. Um, but that's obviously a discussion for another day as to whether we can afford to stay up and stuff like that. Um, but we'll see see what happens, won't we? So um, I think I've covered most of the main subjects now for, for the forthcoming week. If there's anything I've missed, I apologise. Um, but don't forget to, uh, you know, keep watching. I do one of these every week now. And if you've got any things you'd like to suggest that I could add into it, um, just let me know below. Um, but for now, that's it. So thanks for your time and I look forward to seeing you all again next week.